When we started designing Shark 15 years ago, one of the main aspects that we focused on from the very beginning is to make sure that Shark becomes one of the safest aircraft in the world in our category. In the first episode of this mini-series, we showed you the first set of safety features of Shark. In this second episode, you will see another set of features making Shark one of the safest aircraft in its category. If you have electric failure, you can have a problem. Electric fail means uh, you have not power from the generator, you have not power from the battery. Battery switched off and you see this is still working. Yeah? Because this has its backup battery, so we can let it stay on and battery will run it next one hour. So you have, you have flight data, you have GPS, you have, you have engine data. You can have as well problem with a uh, with screen not just not just with, uh, with uh, electric power in the case the screen will die so we switch off the power we have no electric from the outside from the engine and from the battery screen will die Oof. we still have the backup instruments and here is a small FEs in 80 millimeters we install mostly the oblo from from italian uh, flybox uh, and you have full flight data speed altitude vario artificial horizon ball compass g meter it again has its backup battery and you are able to fly next one hour, maybe more. Because Shark is a very fast airplane, we paid big attention to flutter phenomena. Uh, because of that, the elevator is 100% uh, uh, balanced and uh, also all control surfaces are hinged at three points. If you lose, can be can be danger for the next flight. Uh, always we use uh, three hinges, not just two hinges. Uh, and and you see as well on on our our flap system uh, system three hinges because we understand it like more safe. We have a really large, quite big surface of uh, trim tap. On the prototype, it was. Uh, something like this, and uh, we we made uh, we doubled it after the first tests. Uh, uh, we was uh, trying to handle uh, the rules which require to be fully trimmed aircraft, even on the low speed with the flaps. And uh, plus, we added uh, next system to handle this. With, uh, with uh, flaps, when, when we are opening flaps, there is a spring system which uh, brings the force to the, to the elevator control and when you are opening flaps, elevator, elevator is uh, in really pulled a little out. Uh, this was uh, primary to solve this problem with the trimming on slow speed. But secondary effect of this is that uh, shark, when you open flap, need not trimming, so it's, it has an uh, auto trim feature. When we worked on uh, uh, certification of Shark for new 600 kilo category in Czech, even in Germany, there is one uh, significant difference to the old rules that is uh, mandatory defines the weight on the front on the both seats in the aircraft so for us it means is even in the front seat or even on the rear seat in czech rules it is 100 kilo and in german rules it is 110 kilo to handle this we, i was working about one year to to find solution to stay within the the cg limits which were defined by the rules some some properties of the aircraft 
And uh, the solution for us was to use the movable ballast. Movable ballast means that we have uh, six kilogram weight, uh, which is uh, placed in the front on the uh, in the motor cooling or in the bagash. And uh, the rule is very simple: if you are in aircraft solo, this this uh, weight is in uh, placed in bagash. In if you are two person in aircraft you have to place the weight to the front and uh, this flag is visible for the pilot so he can check it indicates him that ballast is placed in the front plus he has uh, on the panel as well electronic indicator there is led which show him if it is placed in the front on in the back this Mm, reduce the CG travel about four uh, percent of the aircraft, so we stay in the limits even with 110 kilo person on the rear seat. We understand this that it can significantly improve uh, the safety of the of the aircraft. My favorite safety feature of Shark is that I can see the Pito cover from the cockpit. Uh, one of the problems in the flying can be icing, and, and part of the icing problem is icing of the carburetors. Uh, one of the possible solutions is uh, to preheat uh, air, which, is, uh, which enters the carburetor. Next possible solution is to preheat the, the body of the of metal body of the carburetors, which we use. Here I install the water heaters which take the, the hot water from the system. Here is part which where circulates this hot water and the metal body of the carburetor is preheated directly direct with, with the hot water. In the system is as well simple valve, so if, if you fly in summer in, in, in really uh, hot, hot days, so, so preheating is not, not, not a problem, so you just switch it off for the summer. And in, in, for winter flying, we, we, we switch it on. We open valve, that's all. Next uh, problem or possible problem which we was solving in the past was uh, vapor lock. The vapor lock typically comes when uh, engine is running and uh, then is stopped. So if you are on the ground and you switch off the engine, so heat, heat which is inside, uh, is dissipated and it heat up the air below the coalings and as well it heat up the, the fuel which is in the system and it can start to boil. We made three, three modifications to prevent or to improve, uh, increase the safety. One is we change the routing of the hoses, let the, let the hose where is return line is in the most uh, upper position if there is bubble in the system let it goes back to the fuel tank next uh, was that we installed below the motor cooling uh, temperature sensors one temperature indicated is is temperature below the motor cooling which is typically 15 to 20 degrees celsius higher than outside temperature and the next one, the next sensor is direct on the, on the fuel hose. Uh, normally there is not, no, no difference, minimum difference. And we have adjusted in the, in the, on the screen the warnings. If temperature re reach uh, 60 degrees of Celsius, you have uh, yellow. Yeah. And if it reach 70 degrees of Celsius, it switch to the red and you have, you have you have a uh, hard warning about the vapor lock Engine because monitor. most probably vapor lock will come. Vapor lock is problem of the automotive fuel, not, uh, not of the avgas, because there is, there, is, uh, there is alcohol and the more alcohol is the system, uh, the lower boiling temperature of the fuel. The next point which we made is that in the cooling we have uh, Oil doors we installed with a spring. Vapor lock is problem always on the ground, never in the air because in the flight you have enough cooling. On the ground you can overheat the system. And so in the hot days we recommend to keep the 
all doors opened, don't close it, and the system works that, that on the ground when aircraft is staying, uh, the doors are fully open, so you have improved ventilation of the, of the space below the cooling, and it flight airstream simple close uh, small doors there, there still is gap about two three centimeters but everything is working there is no problem just uh, most people on the ground wave to you that you you have forgot the the closed doors but not it's intentionally <laughs> <laughs> to improve or to improve the ventilation of the engine compartment easy has uh, maybe 70 hours in shark <laughs> let he, let let he, let he still not uh, not ready for solo and uh, let we protect some some important switches we we have easy cover and uh, which which protects on the rear seat the master magnetos and starter let he don't operate the aircraft if if we don't want i designed it because of the easy but of course it can serve as well if for instance if you if you have the small kits on the rear seat, which you have not exactly under control, so it's good to have, have the protected these switches. Shell of the cockpit is produced like separate part in really on really quite complex mode.